What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to teach you how you can spy on your top competitors using the Content Intel Spy. Throughout this workflow we're going to be taking a look at their top performing keywords, their best articles, and how we can reverse engineer it for our benefit. So let's dive in. To access the Content Intel Spy, go to the description or the comment section and I've provided a link. Now this is only available for you guys who have the link. It's not public and I'm not planning on making it public. I've trained our Intel Spy so that it has this SEO checklist constantly running in the background. So anytime you analyze a website, it's gonna go through the SEO basics, keyword research, technical SEO, on-site SEO and content, as well as off-site SEO. But for today's video, we're going to be specifically looking at keyword research and on-site SEO. I've also included four conversation starters to make your workflow a little easier. For our initial prompt, I'm running the following command. Content Intel Spy, I want you to analyze my competitor's blog post at the given URL, and I aim to beat them on the SERP for the query that you first found them with. Identify the following types of keywords we should use for SERP ranking, primary, secondary, long tail, NLP, and LSI keywords. Then I want you to provide me with the goal and directive of the page, provide me with the search intent of the article, and then lastly, provide me with a comprehensive content outline for the article. Once you've done that, your Content Intel Spy is now going to analyze their page and find all of those key areas and opportunities. So now under Keyword Analysis, we have our primary keyword, which is Venice at night. We have our secondary keywords that you should be targeting throughout your article, your long tail keywords. So these may make for a great FAQ section or possible subheadings, your NLP keywords. So these are ones that you're going to be naturally including throughout your article. And lastly, your LSI keywords. Now, the reason that we're asking for the goal and directive of the article is to ensure that our Intel spy has a full understanding of what goes into this page. It's not necessarily for us. It's there to better align the Intel spy with what our end goal is. The search intent of the article is to ensure that the Intel spy has an understanding of what type of page that we're looking for. In this case, it happens to be an informational blog post with affiliate marketing links throughout. And we're going to be replicating that on my affiliate marketing website, Compass and Pine. Now there's a reason why I extract the content outline and I don't just immediately start writing the article. When the GPT starts writing the article, you have a hard time tailoring it to exactly what you're looking for. However, with the content outline, we can identify areas of opportunity and places that we can improve on prior to writing the article. And then a little further down from that, we have the tone and style of the article and what our Intel spy is going to be writing towards. But before we begin, I'm going to ask the Intel spy if that's the most robust outline that it can possibly create. Is there anything else that we can include to ensure that we are adding value to our reader? The content Intel spy finished, and now we have more information that we can provide to our initial content outline. And this is going to create an even better and more engaging article than our competitor. Once you're happy with your outline, we can start the creation process. But I like to prompt the Intel Spy with a little more information about my website, my brand voice, my audience, my engagement objectives, my unique selling propositions, and my own tone and style. Because I don't want it to just simply mimic the competitor, I want it to write specifically for my website in mind. Now, I already have that information, but if you don't, you're going to provide the Intel Spy with a link to either your homepage or your blog post and again, ask it to extract your audience, your brand voice, your USP, your engagement objectives, and your tone and style. Once you've finished extracting that information from your site, I'm asking our Intel spy to give me a clickworthy title for this article that entices the reader and start writing the introduction. After reviewing the output, I'm actually pretty happy with the results, but it still does that weird thing where it starts off every article with, in a world or something to that effect. So I would just manually remove that. But let's say you wanna add some additional information to the intro section. Keep in mind that ChatGPT is still pretty bad at word count, but what you can say is a paragraph count. If I want my introduction to go from two paragraphs to four paragraphs, 
I would just simply prompt that. For the body paragraphs, we're going to do something slightly different. We're asking the Intel spy to use white space, include bullet points and order lists where appropriate, and also include block quotes if they're available. Because while I was reviewing my competitor's website, one of the things I noticed is that they use a lot of in-depth paragraphs paragraphs that go on for eight to 10 lines at a time. So that's an area of opportunity. A lot of people aren't going to read that information if it's overly long and not scannable. So that's exactly what the GPD did. It provided me with a brief introduction to both Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica. It gave us some historical context as well as visiting tips. And a little further down, we also have a block quote that I can use as a call out. And we can use this to direct the reader's attention to this particular section. And then I would include an affiliate link immediately after so that they could book a tour of both Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica after sundown. I'm gonna finish the article with the Intel Spy, and then I'll show you a few more tips on how we can improve this page. Content Intel Spy finished my article, and the next step I'm going to do is include some FAQs that are relevant to the page. But I'm not going to rely on ChatGPT to build the FAQs because I actually want what's appearing on the SERP. Now you can ask ChatGPT to do this for you, but it tends to hallucinate its results, and it's not actually indicative of what's on the SERP. What we're going to do instead is go to alsoask.com or answerthepublic.com and find FAQs that are appearing on the results page. I typed in my primary keyword and now I have this web of questions. Now each one of these questions, you see the little plus icon, you can click into that and it'll expand the web even further down. I don't recommend including all of these on your page, but I am going to pick five or six that are most relevant and then I'm going to have ChatGPT answer each one of them. Once you've selected your FAQs, we're gonna hop back over to ChatGPT and then ask the Content Intel Spy to write the answers to each FAQ with Google's People Also Ask in mind. So we're focusing on accuracy, clarity, and conciseness for each answer. Following this, we're gonna have our GPT create the FAQ schema for those questions. Once it's done writing the FAQ schema markup, you're going to copy it, come down to where it says validate schema and just use the schema markup validator to ensure that it did it, everything correctly. Another thing I like to do for all of my articles is create an HTML table summarizing the information the reader is going to find throughout the article. This is going to allow them to quickly scan the table and find the information that's most relevant to them. While having a long form and in-depth article is fantastic for ranking on the SERP, we also want to ensure that we're creating value for our reader. So if we can help them in any way, we should aim to do so. We're going to move into creating the metadata for our new page. I'm telling our GPT what our primary keyword is and not to exceed 60 characters for the meta title. That way we avoid truncation. And for the meta description, we don't want to exceed 160 characters we want to include relevant keywords, and we also want to include a call to action. Once we've published our article, we're going to want to do some social media outreach. So I'm having our GPT create each social media post so that we can just quickly copy and paste them. If you've done everything correctly, you should get an output similar to the one that's on the screen, where we have our new meta title, our meta description, and then our social media posts. Now, depending on the type of article you just created, your social media posts may differ based on the platform. I would just ensure that each one of them is aligned with your platform of choice. What works for LinkedIn probably isn't going to be the same post that you copy over to Instagram. If you wanted to continue working on this, my next step would be having GPT create the images for you, but I'm going to take it in a different direction. Now that we have our article, I want to understand what kind of internal linking structure we can create. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to create an entire pillar and cluster strategy that we can incorporate with our new article. The Content Intel Spy is finished, and now we have our table, and it includes our keyword cluster, our primary keyword, our secondary keywords, the search intent for this page, as well as a title and description. And the title and description are mainly there for you to kind of show you what this page would be about. Going over this table, I think it did a really great job and this is going to allow us to create topic clusters around our new article. In order to action on these, I would just simply follow the exact same approach. For historical landmarks, I would find who's currently ranking in the top three for that term, reverse engineer what's working for them, what's not working for them, and find those areas of opportunity where we can capitalize on it. 
I would extract all of their keywords. I would build a robust content outline and follow every other necessary step to get to this point once again. Once your workflow within ChatGPT is finished, your next step is uploading it to your website. I've gone to Unsplash to find royalty-free images that I can incorporate through this article, but I also have my own collection of photos from my time spent in Venice. Because if you remember from the beginning, we really want to capitalize on the use of white space. We don't just want a wall of text because no one's going to sit there and read it all. After our introduction, I included my affiliate marketing links. I've also uploaded the table that we've worked on. And then we get down into the body of the article. And this is exactly what our GPT has provided us. All the way at the bottom of the page, we also have our FAQs that we created a little earlier. With the schema markup we created, I'm just copying and pasting that into the header script section of WordPress so that now we have that directly on the page and Google can crawl and analyze what this page is going to be about. All right, guys, that's everything I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I also hope you learned something. I've provided all of the prompts that I used in this video in the description and also in the comment section. I've also provided you with a link to access the content Intel Spy so you can work with it within your own GPT instance. If you have any questions about this workflow, just drop them down in the comment section and I'll try to answer them. If you want to learn how to create your own SEO GPT that's personalized for your use case, I'll also include a link for that video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs up anyway. I'm really trying to grow and I'd appreciate your support. Until next time, this is Todd.